Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Julie, keeper of my home, and we are in week five of the pantry challenge. Now, if you're not familiar with the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge, that is where you eat from your own food stores. We are cooking and eating from what we have in our home. We are not going out and buying anything extra. We are doing this for the months of January and February. Everyone is different, so your rules are your rules. And for us, we're going to do the months of January and February. We are running low on a couple of things, but um, we're going to persevere through. <laughs> My word for the year is determined, and I'm determined <laughs> we are going to get through this. Now, while I have some raisin bread going in the, our Bosch mixer, Joe is making venison sausage. Now, you may have seen last week's video where we had venison sausage, but he didn't show how he made it. So I'm going to leave the link for the recipe that he uses in my description box below the video. As I mentioned, we are running low on a couple of things. We're running low on potatoes and ground beef. So we're just gonna have to be careful with what we do have and uh, use it in moderation. We are also out of onions. That was one thing I was really hoping not to run out of, but we've used what we had in the freezer. We've used dried onions and we've used fresh onions. So we do not have any more of those left. Two things we did allow for during this pantry challenge is dairy and fresh fruit. So far for the month of January, we have had to buy milk twice. That's just two half gallons. And for fruit, we have bought oranges and bananas and lemons, I believe. So that is all we have gotten in the month of January. So it wasn't really a whole lot. I feel like the fruit will take us through February. The dairy, I'm sure we'll probably have to get more milk. We do take care of our two granddaughters. So we do keep milk in the house. That's important. We don't have a milk cow. Although I do wish we did, <laughs> we do not. We have had a few people ask us if we've found this challenge hard, and we haven't. This is what we do all the time. My phrase in life is waste not, want not. It was one my mother used, and I use it as well. It's important to look at what you have, because we are putting up food every year. We're canning, we're freezing, we're doing all the things to preserve the food to have it. So that's the food you need to use. It's kind of like your own grocery store. So before we shop the store, we always shop our home. For the months of January and February every year, we're just a lot more intentional about that. So we are not leaving the home to shop at the store for anything. Exceptions, of course, are if anything goes wrong in your home and you need to take care of that, your vehicle or any medical expenses. I'm going to cut in here a little bit because that bacon that Joe was frying was actually for our breakfast on that day. I'm going to back up a couple of days because we were away earlier this week. So I kind of didn't get in a couple of dinners and this is one of them. Now last week, if you remember, we took Cornish hens out of the freezer and this is how Joe cooked them. He spatchcocked them and covered them in bacon and uh, baked them. It was absolutely delicious. So that was one I didn't get the full meal details on, but that's what we had one night. And this is what we had another night. This meal was created the day after we got back. I didn't really have any plans. This was literally just thrown together because I just needed something very simple. Madeline wanted to make dinner on this night. So she's just throwing some rice, some cream of chicken soup into a pan, putting a little bit of chicken broth in there and adding chicken and some seasonings. So easy, a six-year-old can do this. It was very easy. 
Just going to put that into a 350 degree oven, cover it with foil, let it bake 40 minutes to 50 minutes probably, and that's it. That's, that's all it took and it was done and it was so delicious. It was really creamy. The rice was almost risotto-like. It was very, very good. And Madeline did an excellent job at doing this. She was so proud of herself. I love when people involve their kids in cooking because number one, they're gonna be more apt to eat what they're, what's on the table because they had a hand in it and they're proud of it and they, they wanna eat this. And she was so proud of getting this meal done and put on the table for ev everyone. And I wish I would have gotten it, but I wasn't filming at the time. But she said, this is going to be so good because there's so much love in this. Right, Mimi? And that's what I teach them. Cook, put your love in it for your family, and it's going to be delicious. Now let's get back to breakfast. I'm just going to put this bacon that's finished and in the uh, cook stove just to keep it warm in there. Joe's going to fry up some potatoes and this is really going to be a delicious breakfast. Joe grew up the son of a potato farmer. So potatoes were an essential thing for him growing up and he had them pretty much three meals a day. <laughs> he, he's used to a big breakfast and you know, a lunch and a dinner and yeah. I just celebrate the fact that I am so blessed that he is an amazing chef, just amazing. His mama taught him well. My recipe for my bread is basically the same recipe as it always is. <laughs> I just add or take away or you know just play with it uh, sometimes I throw in a little bit of sourdough starter sometimes I add cinnamon and raisins and it's cinnamon raisin bread and that is what I'm doing on this day my husband loves cinnamon raisin bread so I've got one for us one to give away and one to toss into the freezer My bread recipes always make at least three loaves minimum. So I always have extra. I always give away a loaf and I always put one in the freezer. All I do is I slice it up and once it's sliced, I bag it up. I double bag it actually. And then I put it in the freezer. And then when we need the bread, I can pull whatever amount of slices that I need on that day. So it just makes it a lot easier and having it already sliced up, I'm not having to defrost the entire loaf of bread. I can just pull what I need. While Joe is working on breakfast, I'm going to have an orange. These are Cara Cara oranges. They're kind of a cross between a grapefruit and an orange, but they're much sweeter than a grapefruit. They're very delicious if you've never tried one, and they're really big. As with most things, I am saving the peels, but only for a moment. Sometimes I save them to put in homemade cleaners. Sometimes I use them as a potpourri on the stove, but this time I'm going to zest it. I'm going to add the zest to some sugar. It's just white granulated sugar. I'm doing this because it will flavor the sugar. And within the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be making some orange cranberry scones. Now, whenever I make anything orange cranberry, I kind of like to add orange flavored sugar. So this is my way of making it. I just add the zest to the sugar, no certain amount, just whatever you want to do. Put it in a bowl, mix it all up, and the zest is moist, so it you don't want to put it right into a jar after you've zested it. What you want to do is pour it into a baking dish and then let it set and dry. So I'm actually going to put this in the oven, in the cook stove, and I'm just going to let it sit there for a little while. It'll dry out, and then I'm going to jar it up for later. 
This will work with lemons too, if you wanna do a lemon sugar. It's, it's really great, you should try it. I make lemon blueberry scones, I do the same thing with those. And breakfast is ready. The sausage is homemade, venison sausage Joe made himself, and the eggs are fresh from our chickens. The bacon is the only thing that is store-bought. The potatoes were left behind in a field after the harvester had already gone through. Dinner on this night is going to be St. Louis style ribs. We pulled these out of the freezer a day or two ago. They've thawed in the refrigerator and Joe is just mixing up a rub for them. Now he just throws together a rub. It's a little bit of brown sugar, the usual suspects, you know, like the applewood seasoning and the garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, paprika, and he always uses liquid smoke. He puts it all on the uh, ribs, gets it all plastered, both sides, pushes it right down in there really good. And then he covers it with foil and he lets it sit in the refrigerator for quite a while. And then he will cook these on low and slow. So while Joe and I were working together in the kitchen, we were discussing uh, what we were going to have for the next two nights dinner. And so we decided that we were going to do cheeseburgers on one of those nights. We always make our hamburger buns. We don't buy them at the store. So I thought, well, I know I've already made some <laughs> raisin bread today, but now it's on to the white bread because we actually need bread for the week, plain white bread. But we also need some hamburger buns for the cheeseburgers. The recipe that I use to make these hamburger buns is just my white bread recipe. Um, just breaking off uh, little pieces enough to make about six hamburger buns and gonna bake those at 375 for about 20 or 25 minutes. Along with those hamburger buns, I am going to make two loaves of white bread one will go into the freezer, one will keep out for now, and I'm also going to make a loaf of cinnamon swirl bread. All I do is roll out the dough and I cover it with some butter, some melted butter, or even softened butter will work. And then I add brown sugar and cinnamon over the top and I roll it up, bake it just like I would my regular bread, and it is delicious. It's actually Joe's favorite. I have some exciting news to share with you. I have decided to start a newsletter. Now this newsletter has been kind of in the works for a little while now. The general purpose of this newsletter is to be able to host a place for all of my recipes. 
Each week I have a video coming out and there's always a lot of different things that we're cooking or baking and I have a lot of people asking for recipes and I can't always put them all into the video so the newsletter will give me a place to put them whether it's links or an actual recipe. I'm also going to be sharing a lot of tips and ideas and all things home inside this newsletter. So be watching for all these great things that'll be coming your way soon. Another delicious meal made completely from what we have in our pantry and food stores. On this particular day, we ended up having a pipe leak. There was a connector to it started leaking, it had broken. So we had a little minor flood under the sink, so I had to pull everything out of there, clean it all up, and we called the plumber and thankfully he came quite quickly actually and had it all fixed for us. I'm making peanut butter cookies. That is a cookie I have not made in a really long time. I don't often make these. I guess probably because I don't think of them. The recipe I'm using is from online, Sally's Baking Addiction. I love her recipes. I've never had one of her recipes fail me yet. So she's usually my go-to place when I'm looking for something. If you're interested in trying out her recipe, I'll leave a link for you in my description box below. If you've never heard me say it before, this is the best seat in the house. <laughs> this is where you'll find Joe most all of the time. It's the warmest spot in the house for sure. The cookie dough needs to sit in the refrigerator for a little bit, so while it's doing that, I'm going to take the opportunity to make my bed for the day. That is something I enjoy doing because I like walking back into our room in the evening and seeing that freshly made bed. It just makes me smile. If you've been with my channel for a while, then you know how many times this dining room table has moved from place to place. Well, I think it's finally found its home. I don't think it's going to be moving from this spot anymore. And one of the reasons why is because we actually changed the dining room into a new room. And I'm going to reveal that very soon. So stay tuned for that.
This was actually the first time that I've made this particular recipe from Sally's Baking Addiction, and it was a big success. Our oldest son came down and he tried one and he gave us his seal of approval. <laughs> He's very picky when it comes to cookies, so it's really difficult to get an approval out of him. You're probably seeing a little bit of a pattern here. <laughs> My husband's back at it again with the dry rub seasonings. He's actually doing a bit of meal prep. We have a pork roast that he's going to put a, a rub all over it and just put it in a bag into a bowl and he's going to put it in the refrigerator and just let it set for a couple of days. This is actually something we're going to have on the weekend. so. You're going to have to wait till next week to see us do that full recipe. A little bit of bacon grease makes everything taste better. Joe's heating up some bacon grease in a cast iron pan to fry the potatoes in. And then we are going to fry up some burgers. This is just regular ground beef. And these are potatoes that I canned last fall. You can see there. They don't look the prettiest, but boy, do they ever taste good. A little extra help in the kitchen is always nice. Madeline is keeping vigil over her eggs while they boil, something she absolutely loves for a snack. One of my favorite quotes by Benjamin Franklin is, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. Involving children in everyday tasks and chores is really good for them and they love to be involved. I finally found a new use for my paper towel holder. Remember those hamburger buns that I made earlier in the day? Well, this is the meal that we made them for. If you've never made homemade hamburger buns, you just need a bread recipe, that's all. They are perfect, better than store-bought, and they don't have all those nasty preservatives in them. I've mentioned it before here on my channel, but if you're new, we are co-parents to two of our granddaughters. We love having them here. We've pretty much had them coming here quite often since they were infants. And I mean, you can't beat the entertainment. 
Every night at dinner time, we always eat together, usually at the counter or at the table. But we always ask the girls three questions. One is three things you're grateful for. Two is what was the highlight of your day? And the third question is, what did you do today to make someone else's day better? Joe and I take our turn in answering the questions as well. I feel like these questions help us to remain positive and remember our blessings. And I also feel this helps the girls to become more intentional throughout their day. Thank you and choose for this foodie simple for us to put our strength drink in our bodies. Each time we pray, amen. Madeline, three things you're grateful for. Uh, Right, two things. My pets, my family, my friends.